Hey guys, what's up? This is just a little man gameplay. Um, I was supposed to do a GTA, but I was like, yeah, let's do something. I did a Madden, check the only joy. So, we have nothing else to say. Um, have a good day, enjoy this upload. And peace. Wiley, oh, definitely. All the veteran names. You name it, has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make that type of a catch. Newton on third down. Blitz coming and down he goes. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. They go play action here on first down. Kaiser hit, and he lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. The intended target was Corey Coleman, and now it's third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. Throwing deep here for Coleman. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. Here's Britton Colquitt now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Taking it about the 16. Shrugs him off. He won't go down. It's a nifty return of 29 yards. Here are the Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now Newton. Flush to his right. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Well, that's a good chunk of yardage that's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? Third and long, it's Newton. He finds some open field here. We have played three quarters. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. And the Browns getting set to go. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it 
And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Mike Adams. And I do believe this is going to wind up a safety. It is. It's a safety. How about that for a wacky play? Wow, what a disaster. You talk about a guy making a good play on the interception and then just trying to be too cute on the return. It almost felt like his own gyroscope really got out of whack, didn't it? Going backwards into your own end zone after such a great play. Totally disoriented and gave up two points for his team. This is fielded at the 27. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. Looking deep downfield. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Throwing back across his body. Picked off by Mike Adams. And he will take this across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. A young pup, the rookie being intercepted by a veteran DB. And I loved our quick conversation in pregame with him on the field where he said, hey, look, I love playing these young quarterbacks. They don't know a whole lot yet, so I can use my mind to put me in a position to make a play. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. connect on the long pass it falls down incomplete well they haven't had a whole lot of success in the passing game here now in the second half he's thinking I guess maybe just take a shot deep I think you're right almost looking for a bailout isn't he can my receiver go up and make a big play for me can I create a penalty downfield maybe pick up an interference at all or get that yardage downfield anything trying to get going again but you're right he definitely took a shot a gain of eight on the keeper and a first down. And while it's highly unusual for NFL teams to think about using their quarterback on key third down runs, none of those teams save one has Cam Newton. He's unique, one of the biggest quarterbacks you'll ever see. Give him the ball, let him pick it up. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Back to throw, Newton. Oh no, he lost the football. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first, they've got two more to use here in the final stages. Offense with a fumble, but they recover it and it brings up second down. Newton's going to throw it. Dance into his left. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. The intended target that time was Jonathan Stewart. And that'll make it third down. Quick hands that time to knock that one away. It sure looked like a short touchdown, but able to get a good break on the football and force the incompletion. Third down. Here's McCaffrey. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. And now the Browns are going to take another timeout. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And Gano's kick is right through. And that will push the lead up to five. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch it. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. And what a job there by all 11 on the kick return. The blocking excellent. The return excellent. The result, six points. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. 
It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. They may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Mario Addison in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. He looked to throw. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. It's another big shot dodged there defensively. Now they're just one point completion away from salting away this victory. And I know this feeling. They were almost giddy, but they have to stay focused and locked in. They can make one big mistake and throw it all away. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Panthers are going to win the football game. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. The Panthers down to a knee out of the victory formation. The Panthers on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third down and 12. Clock counting down toward 40 seconds as they take the knee. Here's Michael Pilardi now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And look out. And that is a tough pill to swallow. All they had to do, Charles, keep the ball, work this clock. The only way for the defense to win was to force the fumble. And they did. Took it the other way for a score. And now, if you're the offensive team, it will take a miracle, perhaps, to win this ball game. So they're unable to stretch it to a three-point lead. Now, you got to be careful on the kickoff because the field goal obviously beats you. Definitely, and that's why they went for two. They wanted to make sure a field goal wouldn't beat them. Now they're in a position. And there he goes again. And he's going to take it all the way into the end zone. What a return. And they've taken the lead. It's been a back and forth game. A lot of points on the board. And that return right there kind of indicative of how this thing's gone. Yeah, you've seen both teams go at it. And as you just pointed out, both of them have found the end zone. But just like in boxing, you know the blow that hurts the most? The one you didn't see coming. And that often is the case when it comes in special teams. So they're going to go for two. They'll let Stewart try and run. And he will get into the end zone for the two points. And that helps. That gives him a seven-point lead. Needed a couple yards for the two-point try. They go to the ground game, and it works. And sometimes it's the exact right thing to do because a lot of teams play you for the pass. So you spread people out, decide to run the football. You often find good running lanes. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. The risk-reward of the onside kick. When you don't get it, the risk comes out to play. And here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them. And field go. position Where's leads you to that type of play calling. And whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off at the 16. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, we were... 
Congratulations! You made it to the end of the video. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff.